Hello dear students. Today we will read battery. Okay. So I hope you all are safe at home and uh, take out your copy, start understanding, start writing the key points whatever I'm explaining you. Okay. So battery. From the childhood we know that battery is a small devices where we will produce what electrical energy. Okay. So here batteries basically of two types. Batteries are of two types. One is primary cell, another one is secondary cell. Okay. The battery that we are used in a remote or watch that is your primary cell. How, are, how do you know that that is primary cell? Primary cell, characteristics of primary cells are these cells are non reusable Another thing is that <clears throat> these cells are non rechargeable okay another thing is that irreversible what irreversible okay so these are the characteristics of primary cell okay and what are the secondary cell characteristics obviously the opposite one that is what these cells are rechargeable or reusable second is what these cells are rechargeable third is what it is reversible Okay, so the watch batteries, hmm, double A, triple A battery that is pencil batteries, like this. So these batteries are normally what under the primary cell, and those who are rechargeable batteries like your mm, inverter battery, car batteries, these all are secondary cells. Okay. So what happens normally in a cell? We already read in this chapter that the conversion, what conversion? Chemical energy to chemical energy to electrical energy. Okay. And again from electrical energy to chemical energy. Okay. Hmm. So chemical energy to electrical energy. So in this primary cell, what happens? Chemical changes. That is the galvanic cell, or chemical energy will give electrical energy. Here both the things happens in secondary cell. Okay. So we will go in details that primary cells, the example of primary cell are, right, example, dry cell. Okay. Dry cell. If not, uh, you can also call Leclerc's cell. This is also known as Leclerc's cell. Okay. Next is Mercury cell. Okay. Mercury cell. Or, or Hg cell. Huh? 
so in the secondary cell examples are lead storage battery lead storage battery and simultaneously nickel cadmium okay nickel cadmium battery okay dry cell mercury cell that will under your primary cell secondary cell which is lead storage battery or nickel cadmium battery here what happens both your chemical chain energy gives electrical energy initially okay while you are charging it again you are applying electrical energy or electrical electricity to your inverter battery or a um, rechargeable battery that will happen insert something ha will happen that is the chemical reactions by which it will store energy once while it will while discharging this energy will change to electrical energy through which we can light our fan light tv etc etc at your home appliances right so the example are, are the lead storage and nickel cadmium understood so let us discuss about the primary cell okay okay <clears throat> so in primary cell dry cell we'll see okay so dry cell that pencil battery that remote battery okay so what is the construction part let us check here i'll make it big suppose this is a cell okay and you all know this top part is positive this side if you will rotate that you will get to know this side is positive and this is cathode the end part will be your anode or negative so this is what primary cell in primary cell primary cell is nothing but your galvanic cell galvanic cell always the positive is your cathode negative is your anode remember these are very important things lone ha huh? remember the lone left oxidation anode negative so this is what graphite okay this is what graphite and here a paste is kept and this is what insulator of zinc okay and inside it what you will get mno2 carbon nh4cl the combined paste is applied in this area okay or electrolyte so what will happen here two electrodes like it will act as a two electrodes this is one half this is again one half okay so this is cathode this is anode okay zinc two things will happen oxidation and reduction right what will happen in anode obviously oxidation hmm what will happen in oxidation losing of electron zinc to zinc to plus plus two electron right this will happen in oxidation and what will happen in reduction are at cathodic end mno2 keeps rise your mn 
O O H manganite. How it will give? Obviously, M N is the oxidation state is how much? Plus four here. It will go to plus three. How? By accepting by accepting electron, right? So, and again, how it will form oxide manganese man manganese oxide hydroxide? How will it will form? With the help of these ions, plus NH plus NH four plus. Okay, so it will give NH three again. So once it will convert, it will it can be reversible, right? So that once it is used, once the all reactions completed, it will. not work properly so that we have to throw it right this is what about your dry cell and the maximum voltage is 1.5 volt remember okay so next we will go to the mercury cell mercury cell that we are using in a watch battery okay that mercury okay the small one tiny one if you opened your watch you will get to know a small battery is there okay that battery is nothing but your mercury battery and that is what primary cell okay let's see what is the anode and cathodic reaction over here so <coughs> mercury cell so this is the small small round round uh batteries that has been used in your watch you must have seen inside your watch here the anode is anode is zinc mercury amalgam okay zinc mercury is taken is a anode and cathode is your mercury oxide and carbon okay and the electrolyte that is been used electrolyte electrolyte that has been used is your koh and ZnO zinc oxide and KOH okay that has been used as a electrolyte so what happens in anode it's very clearly zinc what will form zinc hg amalgam when it reacts with these hydroxide ions OH minus ions, okay. It will give zinc oxide. Obviously, oxidation means losing of electron to electron. Okay, along with water. So these two electron will carry with this HgO in cathode. Okay. so what happen in cathode this is what anode or oxidation okay now we'll write about cathode what happen hgo plus h2o and two electron it will give what hg plus oh so hg right h oxide here reduction will happen hmm zero state 
the reduction losing of electron gaining of electron okay here it is gaining electron here it is losing electron here oxidation happen this is what reduction in mercuric cell the important thing is that you have to remember this anodic and cathodic condition or anodic and cathodic reactions in these cells okay in mercuric cell what what is the anode what is the reaction occurring in anode what is cathodic reaction or in dry cell as well you have to remember that what is the condition or what is the reaction so this is what the construction part of your cell how a cell work okay mercuric cell or about the dry cell so next we will proceed towards the secondary cell or lead storage battery let me clean these things so secondary cell is your lead storage battery okay so what is the cell over here very simple okay right one's anode and cathode these batteries are usually used in your inverter right car batteries big automobiles big battery okay and again uh, lithium ion batteries okay so this will under your secondary cell okay so lead storage battery so here what happens in anode i am writing in pb to pb so4 it converts pb to pb so4 okay in cathode it also pb o2 to pb so4 okay pb o2 to pb so4 the important thing in between this we are giving h2 so4 that is 30% okay concentrated 30% concentrated h2 so4 is given for the ionic mobility right so what happens in anode reaction what happens in anode pv is getting pbso4 okay how simply pb to pbso4 means it losing two electron right and where it is getting that so4 plus so4 to minus from where the it is getting this from h2so4 right from h2so4 it takes this so4 to minus and it will convert to pbso4 by losing two electrons okay that two electron this is anode ha huh? that two electron in cathode what happens that two electron pbo2 plus this two electron will giving this pb so4 again right so how it it is giving the pb so4 two electron again it combines with this so4 two minus okay you need to balance all the time okay these reactions you need to balance okay now see if you let 4h plus here h2o hmm 2h2o okay 4h plus so what will be the overall reaction overall reaction what you are getting 
see this 4H plus and this this is your H2SO4 right H2SO4 that one is so you can write this PB this SO4 SO4 2 minus and H2SO4 plus PBO2 plus 4H plus means 2H2 right 2H2SO4 electron electron cancel okay so it is 2PB SO4 plus 2H2O okay so this is what your reaction okay while it is charging this reaction happens it's sorry discharging while charging reverse you need to apply plus electricity you must mention this plus electricity okay once this reaction happens you will get these things along with electricity right once this electricity means once the reaction completes what happen you need to charge your battery and at that moment you have to apply electricity and that electricity and again this reaction ha happens in that side and it will come to this side so that is what your electrolytic cell initially it one is galvanic cell this one is electrolytic cell this is what about your secondary cell or lead storage cell the efficiency of lead storage cell is quite high as compared to your cadmium nickel cadmium cell okay similar type of nickel cadmium you can also use but these batteries nickel cadmium battery is very very expensive and for that reason we are not at all using that nickel cadmium cell but lead storage is very familiar to all of us so we are using heavily inside your home in vehicles as well as because of this expensive and the because of the low expensive and the what efficiency okay this is all about your secondary cell so i am again telling nickel cadmium battery is also a secondary battery and though it is very expensive we all not uh, not use this battery secondary cells but the power consumption or the performance is better in case of lead storage battery and so we are using lead storage battery okay so we will not go details of this because you don't have in your course okay let's move towards the fuel cell okay the students fuel cell is very important nowadays because um, we know that in thermal power how we are generating electricity by hydrothermal projects okay we are applying some we are applying water ha huh. convert by chemical reactions we are um, use it in turbine the spinning of turbine will be high and after that we are generating electricity but we have such device by which we can easily convert these things in a electricity that is what galvanic cell okay chemical energy will give the electricity directly so there is no need of these things right but yes th that is how we will use this galvanic cell for making water and for making electricity that is what fuel cell okay use of galvanic cell or the energy of combustion into the electricity is your fuel cell let me clean these things okay fuel cell okay as i told that we will design a galvanic cell where the combustion will give you that electricity okay right the definition fuel cell the galvanic cell galvanic cell that converts or that designed that designed to convert is it visible okay that designed to convert 
द एनर्जी ऑफ कंबसन दट एनर्जी ऑफ कंबसन ओके कंबसन ऑफ व्हाट कंबसन ऑफ फ्यूल्स सच एज फ्यूल क्या है मिथेन लाइटिंग आ रही है ना ओके सच एज मिथेन इथेन ब्यूटेन हाँ so these are the combustible materials combustible fuels right such conversions or methanol if you are taking etc directly kahan se kahan tak directly to the or directly into your electrical energy इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी ओके डायरेक्टली टू द इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी सच सेल्स और सच डिवाइसेस आर नॉन एज वट फ्यूल सेल अंडरस्टूड दिस इज वन टाइप ऑफ गल्वनिक सेल वेर वे विल कन्वर्ट द कंबसन ऑफ फ्यूल्स लाइक मिथेनॉल मिथेन इथेन ओके नॉर्मल द कंबसिव मेटेरियल्स Fuels, which are acting as the fuels, they will convert to into the electricity. So basically, these fuel cells are highly used in space. Okay, where we are using these to purifying water or vapors. See, during this process, high steam obtained. Okay, we know that steam energy is very much high. So likewise, in hydrothermal case, we are. Uh, getting that electricity by applying water so so there will be what condensed water will be there and by or vapor water will be there that vapor water can be condensed and for useful for the drinking water so normally astronauts they are using this fuel cell for to making water from this kind of methanol or ethanol okay they are using this fuel cell for to make drinking water particularly so these are very very important nowadays fuel cell is highly used in your space research centers okay so what happen in fuel cell again so there will there is the if you will go to the construction part this is nothing but about your hydrogen oxygen only okay so what happen so there is a cell like this wall like this okay so here water these are, normally these are porous hmm one side you will apply oxygen one side will apply hydrogen okay here it will condense and it will give h2o Okay. This is. Oh, sorry, excuse me. This is what your positive. This is what your negative end. Hmm. so what happens in anode right o2 plus h2o plus it will give what it will give four okay 
this is what your cathode happens not in anode hmm. cathode because electron it accepts electron okay what will happen in a node then similarly tumara h2 for oh this 4 oh will give you that h2o h2o plus electrons okay simple the overall reaction what will happen 2h2 plus o2 will give you the 2h2o this is what your overall reaction this is what your overall reaction okay this is your fuel cell next we will proceed to corrosion what is corrosion basically corrosion is a coat right we all know that uh, uh, rusting of iron right that is a corrosion so corrosion is also useful sometimes because it gives a coat or layer it forms a layer sometimes protective sometimes destructive right so corrosion so if you will take a iron piece of iron and if you will keep in atmosphere condition some day will be come a rusting of iron will happen how see this is the fe if it loses irons uh, electrons electrons hmm. this is pura iron block and this will combine along with it will come to fe2 plus right by losing this electron fe2 plus it will come so this fe2 plus will combine with o2 which is present in water or moisture it will form iron oxide fe2o3 which is your corrosion so these are the basically it coats the surface of a metal object right with oxides or other salts hmm this is the corrosion okay how it happens in corrosion the metal oxides metal oxide form by losing electrons right by losing electrons and when it combines with oxygen it forms an oxide understood clear two thing will happen what is the reaction over here you can write fe fe will convert to what fe 2 plus plus 2 electron solid fe will convert fe 2 plus right this fe 2 plus what will happen combines with this fe 2 plus combines with oxygen this fe2 plus combines with oxygen o2 right and in aqueous medium it if it is h plus will be there it reacts with excuse me Here this for 2H plus again H2K saath dipped karke the medium the conversion of medium will be acidic okay so acidic condition bhi hoga this is what the reaction how it will neutralize that acidic medium or overall reaction if you write in this way then this is nothing but your Fe2 plus aqueous plus H2O okay and what the e value equals to 1.6 volt 
Okay, six, 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 three. Okay, so this is about your corrosion or the chapter electrochemistry. Do the exercise. Okay, if any doubt, let me know. I'll explain it again.